So this morning, we're going to be continuing with the series from Philippians. Uh, I'm going to be reading from and talking about Philippians 3, verse 12 to 21. So I'm just going to get my notes together. I have like seven pages here. <laughs> and uh, there's always a risk that I'm going to get muddled up with my papers because there's so many of them. <laughs> so forgive me if I get a bit, yeah. Yeah. But I'm just going to read Philippians 3, verse 12 to 21. This is from the NLT version. It says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, uh, I believe God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress we've already made. Hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I have told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things, and they think only about this life on earth. But we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting um, a Savior, sorry, for him to return as our Savior. He will take our weak and mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own using the same power with which he will bring everything under his power. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's just, did that on its own. It doesn't really need much explanation. That is it. (laughs) So I'd encourage you to reread that when you get home because there's so much encouragement. Uh, But yeah, I'm just going to talk through the verses and just try and explain this, this incredible passage. So what I love in the beginning is that Paul admits that he has not obtained the goal of perfection. He admits that he hasn't obtained it. He hasn't got it. He's got, he doesn't have it all made. Hallelujah. But despite that thing, he says he presses on. He presses on. Why? To take a hold of that which Christ took a hold of him for. Hallelujah. The Christian life is a journey. It's a process. Hallelujah. Becoming like Jesus is an instant. It's a process. We are getting there. We are becoming like him day by day. But despite the fact that we haven't made it yet, we don't have it all together, Paul says he's pressing on. He's going to continue on this journey to become like him. You know, to press on means there is opposition. You can't press against something unless there's something pressing against you. And that's what Paul is saying. He's not passive about becoming like Jesus. He is aggressive. He is pressing. He's making an effort. He is pushing. Hallelujah. So if there's opposition in your journey to become like Jesus, the answer is to press on. Press pass. Hallelujah. Not only that, he said he's pressing on for, um, to take hold of that which Christ took a hold of him. There is an individual, uh, you have an individual journey before the Lord. There's something that God has took a hold of you for. Hallelujah. I don't know if you guys have this saying in the UK, like I grew up in Zimbabwe and we always used to talk about, like I I grew up playing sports and there's this um, phrase, it's bench warmer. Does anyone, is anyone familiar with that? Yes, substitute, that's it. So (laughs) the idea is, if you're, which I have been many, many a time in my day, (laughs) the idea is you're in the team, but you're not actually playing. You're not actually, you're just there to warm the bench. (laughs) You know what I mean? And so you're cheering everyone on, but you're just, you're just there. But in the kingdom of God, you're not a bench warmer. You're not a bench warmer. Hallelujah. 
Can someone say, I'm not a bench warmer? Amen. <laughs> There is a reason why you are saved. There's a reason why Jesus called you to himself. Hallelujah. And you have a responsibility to know what that is and to run your race to win. You are not insignificant. What we're doing this morning is wonderful. It's an encouragement. But this is not it. Me standing here, this is not the ministry of God. The ministry of God starts when I leave the building. It starts in my life. It's your life. That's the ministry. And God has a specific plan for you. Hallelujah. So you have to press on. You have to press past everything that is opposing you to that end. Paul says he hasn't achieved perfection, but he focuses on this one thing. What is your one thing this morning? What is your one thing? I remember someone, uh, an older lady, she's a wise woman of God, and she, she randomly asked me, so Tanya, what's your one thing? I was like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> what is the one thing that you can focus your life on, that you can aim at? Paul's one thing is forgetting what is behind, what is past, looking forward to what lies ahead. In other versions, it says reaching forward. It says straining forward. There's that idea of effort. He's giving everything. He's putting his all into it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why does he need to forget what is behind? Well, because he had a lot of things behind him. He had a lot in his past. He had to forget the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> In prior verses to uh, what I'm talking about this morning, he talks of his background. You know, there was a lot of things that he boasted in in the past. He took pride in the fact that he was circumcised on the eighth day, that he was a Hebrew of Hebrews, that he was a Pharisee. He was righteous according to the law. In fact, he says that he was faultless. He did it all according to the book. But he had to forget that in order to not get stuck in order to know Christ. Hallelujah. Do you know that even the, the good things of the past can make you stuck? The good things that you have achieved can cause you to be stuck somewhere to stop you from running the race to win. Have you ever met those people who are always going on about the good old days? I remember 1974, how the Holy Spirit moved. And there's nothing wrong with remembering. Don't get me wrong. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So why are we talking about 1974? That should just be fuel for what God is doing now. The Bible says the latter house, the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. We are on a journey of glory and it is increasing. Hallelujah. Why not us? I know we love, I personally love to read people's biographies. I love to read the great men and women of God of, of old, the Wesleys, you know, Smith Wigglesworth, you know, amazing people who have done incredible things for God. And it's, it's wonderful. But don't get stuck there. God wants to use you. God wants to use you. God wants to do great things through you. If you will yield yourself the way they yielded themselves, then he will do the same thing and even greater. Hallelujah. So we have to forget even the good things. But not only did Paul have to forget the good things, he had to forget the bad things, the ugly things of his past. You know, Paul was so zealous for the law that he was killing Christians. He was a persecutor of the church. He was a gangster, in other words. He was going to kill if he had to for the sake of his own cause and what he thought was right. Now, if he had remembered those things, he would have been stuck. He would have been stuck in the mud. He would have been condemned. He wouldn't have been the Apostle Paul that we celebrate and know today because of all those ugly things. And how many of us are stuck because of the things that we have done in the past, the things that have broken us, the things that have disappointed us? <clears throat> the failures of our past. Hallelujah. But Paul says he presses on. He presses on. He forgets what lies behind and he strains forward to what lies ahead. So again, when I was growing up uh, um, in Zimbabwe, we had this game. 
it was called Stuck in the Mud. I don't know if you guys have that game. In, essentially, it's tag, but it's, I think Americans call it freeze tag. So the idea is you have two opposing teams. It's just a large group of people. There are those who are assigned to tag others, and then there are those who are assigned to run. So if you're on the team that's tagging, you're there to like touch the runners. And when you touch them, they freeze. They can't run anymore. So that's what we call stuck in the mud. So they are temporarily uh, frozen. And then if you're a runner, your aim is to keep running for the whole game and not get tagged. So the only clause is, if you do get tagged, you have to like stand slightly with your legs slightly apart, and then someone can crawl through your legs and unfreeze you again. So it's quite a lot of fun, really, a lot of carnage. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine, but it was a lot of fun to play. But I think there's a spiritual parallel here. Do you know that you have an enemy, and he is trying to get you stuck in the mud. He is trying to stop you from running the race. Hallelujah. But God, the Holy Spirit is there to liberate you. The Holy Spirit is there to, to unstick you so that you keep running. Hallelujah. So don't get stuck in the mud. I don't know what that mud is for you. It might be a failure. It might be a disappointment. It might be things not working out the way you want them to. It might be what people said about you. It might be how people treated you. But you can forget what lies behind. Another way of saying it, you can let go. There's so much power in letting go of the past. Because uh, if we don't let go, we get stuck. We can't move on. We cannot see what God has for us in front of us. So it is imperative that we let go. I would encourage you this morning. I don't know what has got you stuck, but it's not worth it. Let go in the name of Jesus. Let go so that you can go forth in what God has for you. Hallelujah. Amen. <sighs> There's a lot. <laughs> Selah. <clears throat> He says he presses on towards the goal to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize. So this Christian life is not just, it's not aimless. There is a purpose. We have a prize. Hallelujah. There's a prize. There's a crown waiting for you in heaven. And if this race is unlike any other race, because you win if you finish, that's the goal. You win if you finish. You're not competing against the next person. The, the aim of the race is to stay in until the very end. Isn't that amazing? That all you have to do is to stay. Stay in the, in the race. Stay on track. Keep your eyes fixed on the prize. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Many times, I, and I remember talking to my friend about this. If the enemy cannot take you off the race, take you out get you to quit, he will distract you. He's going to distract you so that you don't keep your focus on Jesus. Hallelujah. So we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. There are many things in this world that are distracting, many beautiful, shiny things in the world that cause us to lose focus on Jesus. But I believe that what Paul is saying is something we can practice every single day forgetting what lies behind and straining forward. Keep your focus on him. Keep your focus on Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. It says that uh, if you are mature, you will agree to this. But even if you don't agree, God will make it plain to you. I love the confidence of Paul. He doesn't try to convince them of what he's saying. He's just like, God is going to show you. Isn't that amazing? Like, if you don't understand something, ask the Holy Spirit. That's, he's our secret weapon, the Holy Spirit. He will reveal the truths of Scripture if we ask him, if we allow him to. Hallelujah. You have a race to run, and you must win the race. Hallelujah. How do we do that? So I'll move on to this next section of verses. Paul talks about patterning your lives after mine. And learning from those who follow our example. Again, it's incredible of Paul that he could say, hey guys, can you look at my life? Pattern your lives around me. Not because he was arrogant. Because he knew he was committed to running this race. He says in the beginning, he's not perfect. 
He hasn't got it all together, but he's running. He's running. Could it be said of you, pattern your, can we pattern our lives around your life? I don't know <laughs> for myself. I'm not, I'm not sure, to be honest. But if we commit ourselves to the race, that we're not going to stay, we're not going to stay in one place, we're going to keep our eyes focused on Jesus, then we can. I think this speaks to the fact that as we run this race, we need other people. This is why we come to church. This is why we have relationships. So we can continue and encourage each other on that race to win the prize. You know, if you want to be on fire for God, get around people who are on fire. Oh, the other day we were talking about um, this example in the scripture of King Saul and how there was a part where he gets around the prophets and he begins to prophesy. That wasn't the, his gift as such, but because he was around the prophets, he began to prophesy. And I think there's a real encouragement there that whatever we get around, we become. So if you want to stay in the race, get with the runners. Who is running around you? Who is passionate about Jesus? Get around them. Learn from them in the name of Jesus. And if you know you are running your race, get alongside some of those who are struggling on the race. Get around them so you can encourage them to keep going, keep running. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. He contrasts this now with the enemies of Christ who are headed for destruction. He says their God is their appetite. They, they brag about shameful things and their focus is on the things of this earth. It's a, it's a real um, wake-up call in many ways. Do you know that you could be attending church and be an enemy of the cross? How do we know? Because of your appetite. What are you hungry for in this life? Are you hungry for fame? Are you hungry for wealth? Are you hungry for notoriety? What are you hungry for? What are you boastful for? What are you proud of? Are you boasting in Jesus or are you boasting about shameful things? The things of this world that are passing away. And is your focus on the here and now? Is your focus on your bills? Is your focus on the government? Is the focus on all these things that are passing away? Or is your focus on Jesus? Where is your focus? He says, but we are different. We are citizens of heaven. Hallelujah. Do you know that you're a citizen of heaven? Somebody say, I am a citizen of heaven. I don't believe you. <laughs> you're like, I'm a citizen of heaven. <laughs> I am a citizen of heaven. Someone say it with boldness. Come on. <laughs> That's where you belong. That's your home country. Come on. You're not just a British citizen. You're a citizen of heaven. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> it's amazing. You know, when you're a citizen of another country, you think differently. You see differently. You talk differently. You are different. Hallelujah. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Hallelujah. You know, when I was young, um, I had the privilege of going to this primary school. I don't know how my mom got us in there, but anyway, she did. Uh, but uh, it was a school that was located with uh, foreign embassies. So a lot of the kids of the ambassadors used to come to the school. So I had classmates from all over Africa, from Egypt, from Sudan, from Ghana, and they were all Nigeria, and they were all the ambassador's kids. And they were just children, just like us, but they were also different. They looked different. They spoke different. I remember, like, they used to get, like, the... the the transport that would take them home. The, their parents wouldn't come and pick them up. They had these amazing like buses and shuttles and stuff that would, they had drivers. It was very amazing. But it's because they were the ambassador's kids, you know? Their parents didn't have time to pick them up because they were talking about, you know, diplomatic things. It's amazing. You know, they were chosen, they were different. And we are chosen. We are different. 
We live according to heaven's uh, mandate. Hallelujah. That's why we can't get bogged down by the things of this earth, by what the government is doing, by how the bills are rising or what's happening on this earth. There's something greater going on in heaven. Hallelujah. And we are called to bring heaven to earth through our lives. Hallelujah. We don't have to be stuck. We are agents of change on the earth. How amazing is that? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. It says, um, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. And we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. Are you eagerly waiting for his return? Do you even think about his return? <laughs> There's so many things that seem to distract us in this world and just seem so loud. But Jesus is coming back and we need to keep our focus on that. Hallelujah. I don't know how you guys felt during the pandemic, but for me, it felt like it was this alarm clock that was ringing in the spirit. It was like, wake up, church. Wake up, wake up, wake up. That's how I was feeling. I don't know if you guys felt the same. But you know, we had a choice and we still have a choice. Like, it, like a regular alarm clock. You can wake up and get out of bed and start doing things or you can hit the snooze button and fall back to sleep. So where are you now? Have you just hit the snooze button and gone back to sleep? Or are you awake? Are you awake to the fact that he is coming? He is coming. And whilst he's making his way, are you occupying as a citizen of heaven where you live, in your family? Are you taking territory? Hallelujah. Are you running this race to win? Because if you're not Get back. Get back on track. Start running. Start running in the name of Jesus. And it says, he will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power with which he will bring everything under his power. Not only are we awaiting a savior, when he returns, he will transform us. That's what it's talking about. That our, our weak bodies, thank God, he's going to change our bodies. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> We're not going to get stuck with these bodies. He's going to change them into glorious ones like his own. Using the very same power he, which he brings everything under his power. When Jesus comes back, he's coming as the reigning king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says that he will have a sword in his mouth. And eyes on fire. Wow. I just love that image of Jesus. The eyes that are on fire. On fire with his love. On fire with judgment. On fire to bring everything under his control. Under his reign. He is glorious. We have a glorious king. Do you know that? The one you serve is glorious. And he is worthy to run this race. Hallelujah. Don't get sidetracked by the things of this world. Look at Jesus and run. Press on. Press past everything that is coming against you. I don't know what that specific thing is for you. But the encouragement this morning is press on. Keep running. Don't let anything or anyone get into your way. He is worthy. Worthy of everything. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just want to pray and then I'm going to ask the band to come back up. It's okay. I'm just going to pray. Yeah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this encouragement this morning to press on. Oh, Father, we don't want to get stuck somewhere. We don't want to get stuck in the mud. We want to forget what lies behind, whether it's good or it's bad or it's ugly. And we want to strain. We want to put our all into you, Lord. Holy Spirit, help us to go forward in our race. Help us, Lord Jesus, to keep our eyes fixed on you, even now, to await you, Lord, await for your return. But in the meantime, Holy Spirit, 
Help us to occupy as citizens of heaven. God, I pray that you will remind us of these truths over and over again. Every single day. That this world is not our own. We belong to a heavenly country. Oh, Jesus. I pray for every person who is struggling on their race right now. I pray, Father God, that you help them to keep on running. To keep on track. To get up when they fall, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. Oh, Father, we give ourselves to you again this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage you that if anything that I've said from the scripture, you know, resonates with you, then pray about it. Just begin to dialogue with God about that specific thing. If you feel like you are stuck somewhere, you feel like you, there's a re, you know, you're stuck, you're not going anywhere in your race, in your walk with the Lord, just begin to cry out to him. And you can ask, I'm sure you can ask some people to pray with you as well. Hallelujah. But be encouraged. Press on in the name of Jesus. Amen.